Hey guys, how's it going? This is Indy and today we're going to take a look at how to do seamless loops for any kind of element or any other video footage that you might have inside of Nuke. Now to do that kind of a cross dissolve loop, it might be easy to do it in a layer based software like After Effects or Premiere, but for Nuke actually it's not that complicated. Now there's multiple ways of going about it, so I'm just going to show you way that I know and the way that I usually use. So the reason why anything doesn't loop obviously is when you have your element, like in our case, we have this smoke element. You can see that the first frame is like that. And then the last frame is like that. Now, in order to make the smoke just keep going forever and to make it seamless, there needs to be some sort of a blending happening. And before I go in and explain the different node setups that I'm doing in order to do this, I'm just going to quickly demonstrate what the process is in this little layer based uh, example with After Effects here so you have an understanding of what we're doing. So imagine your smoke clip that you have here is this clip here and that is that long. Now if you wanted to make some sort of a cross dissolve loop for something like this, the way to go about it in a layer based software is essentially you'll be duplicating your existing footage one time and then in order to dissolve, first you're going to dis decide how many frames you want to do the dissolve over. So let's say if I say I want to dissolve over two seconds, so currently we're at zero seconds, and I'm going to go until two second mark right there, and then I'm going to chop the layer in half. So I'm going to split the layer at that point. And now the way to loop something would be to take the first half of the split and put it all the way at the end so that split part is now at the very end and you take the second half of the layer and you push it to the front like so and because we made the split right there we know that once this runs out there and then it connects back up here now we've made a perfect split but the issue with this is obviously the fact that our base layer is still here so we need to make some sort of a dissolve or opacity animation so technically what we would be doing is setting a keyframe, for example, for opacity for the bottom base layer to be zero at the beginning because the first and the last for the base layer are different. The frames are different. So we want the first and last keyframes for the base layer to be zero. And then we're just going to go forward two second mark somewhere around there. And then we're going to set this back to 100%. The same thing we're going to do here. So we're going to go back to second mark, which will be at three seconds. And then we're going to do the same and set this back to 100. So essentially, this is starting at zero and ending at zero and has a 100% opacity here. Now we're going to do the exact same thing for the other two splits that we did. So this split is now actually going to start at 100% opacity. And when the base layer goes up to 100%, this one drops at zero and continues to stay at zero for the other other side of the split. So this split stays at 0%, but then towards the end, it reaches 100%. So that would be the fastest, quickest way to do a cross dissolve. Now, obviously, we can't do it with opacities because at one point when you reach the halfway point between the two, you actually end up having the problem where the darkness of the overall, the brightness of the overall element actually drops a little. So that's why cross dissolves are a better way where one of the footage is actually dissolving into the next one. Now, in order to do something like this inside of Nuke, what we're going to need is first a time offset node which we're going to put here and then we're going to make a second copy of it to place it here. Now we need to do the dissolve between the two. So we're going to need a dissolve. And then finally, we are going to need to connect the dissolve. The zero input will go to the left side time offset. The one input will go back to the original frame 
and the two input which is hidden on the side will connect over here now just to make things simple because sometimes your elements might come in without having proper frame ranges set up we're just going to set up a frame range in the beginning and once we're done doing all our dissolve animations we're just going to do another frame range so we output a nice clean frame range so in our case this one is set to one two five zero one that's the frame range for the smoke so you set it to one you set this to five zero one and you do the same here now in order to actually do the same thing that we just took a look at in the layer based example in order to do this here there's the quickest way to understand this is let's first decide how many frames we want to dissolve over so let's say since this is 500 frames long we just wanted to dissolve it over a duration of 150 frames for example so in this one what we're going to do is take 150 and then do a minus operation and then add the last frame that we need the last frame of our footage or our element so in our case that is 501 and in the other time offset we're going to do the exact same thing but the other way around so we're going to take our duration and then minus it from our input point so in our case the input point is one so i'm just going to set it to one however what i'm going to do is actually set this to plus one because if i don't do that the very first frame and the last frame of the loop will have the exact same frames and you want them to be different and now in order to see that visually there's a quick tip where you can actually go in and create a text note and you and then if you type in the description square bracket frame and close bracket you actually end up seeing the frame number of your scene the frame that is being rendered after all of these operations are being done so before we do anything else now we can actually go in and key our dissolves so the way to key that would be on the very first frame we're going to set this to a value of zero meaning take this time offset here and this time offset just like the example we saw before is the one that does this half first it actually sends sets the the back half of the clip so we're going to set that to zero now we're going to move forward the amount that we need in duration that we set our duration to which was 150 so i'm just going to go to 150 and set this to one so at this point once it reaches frame 150 we we are saying that switch the dissolve input to the one input which is in our case again our base layer remember how our base layer went from zero to a hundred over the duration so that's essentially what we're doing here now we're going to keep it to one just like how we kept our base layer to the same full opacity all the way till here so we're going to put a second keyframe towards the end but 150 frames minus the end so in our case that will be 500 minus 150 which will be 349 and we're going to set that to one and at the very end we're going to go and switch the input to the second input which is this one which is basically us creating this clip right here by pushing our existing clip that way so now that we're done if we now end up previewing our overall final output if we look at the frame number here you can see that the first frame is actually frame number 352 and if we go to the last frame you'll see it's actually frame number 351 so after it reaches frame 351 it will jump back to the very first frame which will be actually the frame number 352 and then it'll keep going until it does a little dissolve so you can see the dissolve happening here where both the numbers are on top of each other and then it actually dissolves into the original then continues then starts dissolving again to the end clip 
So that would be the quickest way of doing this. Now, if I were to just preview this. And now that you can see, once we're done previewing, if you just focus on the actual element itself, you can see that it nicely fades and cross dissolves onto itself and creates a very seamless loop that now you can use for any kind of element that you wanted to set up in your scene and you just want the element to keep going forever. This is the quickest and fastest way to do that. However, there's actually even faster way of doing this. So if you're someone who wants a little bit of automation so that you can just keep doing this quickly without having to go in and set up some math in the time offsets where you have to do the actual math of the duration minus the end frames and then the duration minus the start frame and then setting up some keyframes on the dissolve key. If you don't want to do that, you can just make a little group or a gizmo which will help automate this entire process. So now I'm just going to show this exact same process, but how to automate that. So in order to do that, I have created a little setup already. So if I move my smoke over here, there's the exact same setup that you saw before. The text node is just disabled for viewing purposes. But if I double click the no op node, the no op node is essentially an empty node with nothing inside of it. So if I create one, you can see that there's nothing in it and then you can always go in and right click and manage user knobs and you can create new knobs based on that so if i click on add if i click on integer i can just type for example frame in as the name of the knob and then create a label for it and that way i can create little integer knobs i can also create buttons where i can write my custom script so I can write a button called execute, for example, and call the label execute. And then in here, I can go in and type my Python script. So I've already done that. And I'm just going to quickly run you guys through what exactly the script is. But once you create those two knobs, so I've created first knob called frame in. This is going to be the first frame of my range. And then frame out is going to be the last frame of the range. And then the blending duration is going to be the actual duration itself. Now what's happening under the execute button, I'm going to show you by right clicking manage user knob. So you can see these are the knobs that I have. And if I click on the execute button and click on edit, you can see the little script that I've written. Now, obviously there's many faster, better, more efficient ways of writing this exact same script but i wrote it in a more descriptive format so that it's easier for you guys to understand so if you're going to follow along and write your own scripts you can understand how to do so so you can see at the top here we have a variable that we're creating called no op node and the command to that is nuke dot this node which means the node on which this script is being executed so in our case that will be the no op node then we're defining the frame range node because we have two frame ranges, one at the start and one at the end. So we're just calling them input frame range node, which is frame range one, then output frame range node called frame range two. Then we're defining time offset before node, which will be the node on the left. We have just renamed it time offset before, and we have renamed this node time offset after. So we're calling and assigning those two nodes to these variables. And then at the very end, we're assigning the dissolve node by calling it dissolve node equals nuke dot two node, and then assigning the dissolve node there. After that, we're going to assign some variables for the actual knobs themselves. So in our no op node, you can see we have created our own custom parameter frame in and frame out. So that's what this is being defined here. We're saying frame in is the no op nodes frame in knob. And this is the value that whatever value it gets assigned in here that the user inputs. Then for frame out is the same thing. And for duration, which is this blending duration variable that we created, we're just setting that here, calling it duration, setting it to be the blending duration knob, and then the value after that we are doing a frame offset variable. Now this is where we're actually doing the math. So the value that we had put into our time offset before node, we are writing it down as the duration, meaning the length of the blend that the user wants, the duration 
minus the frame out, meaning the end point of our overall frame range. So in our case, the end point is 501. So this value will be 100 minus 501. Same thing with the frame offset after. We're defining this variable and we're calling it duration minus the in frame in number and then that plus one that we just discussed. We do that because that way the first and the last frame of the range are not identical. So for that, we just use duration, which again, the user has specified as 100 minus frame in the first frame of your range, which is one. So 100 minus one, which will be 99. And then we're just doing plus one so that again, like I said, the frames are different on the first and the last frame of our final input. Now that we're defined the math here, all we're doing is just going in and setting in some values. So in this entire chunk, we're just setting in some values. And again, like I said, there's faster, easier ways to set this very quickly using loops, but I'm just writing it all down so it's much more easier to understand what's happening. So inside of this, we're setting input frame range node, which if you remember was the node right here, which was our frame range one node. So we're saying, please set the first frame value to the value that was provided by the user in the frame in knob of the no op. So if the user set this to one, then go inside and inside the frame range node. So if I just quickly close all of this to show you. And in here, you can see that there are two options, the frame, the first frame and the last frame. If you want it, ever want to know the value of any knob inside of Nuke, if you hover your mouse over it, you'll see that you'll see the actual name of what that knob is called. So this one is called first frame and this one is called last frame. So we're simply defining the command where we're telling Nuke to pick up the value from whatever value set in our frame in knob on the no op and go and set that to this and then take whatever values in the frame out and then set that here. And then we're doing the exact same operation on the second frame range as well. So if I go back, manage, and then execute, click on edit. That's essentially what we're doing in this paragraph. We're just going in and setting the first and last frame values. After that, we're just doing the same thing, but for the time offset node. So we're saying go to the time offset before node that we had defined up here earlier, and then find the parameter called time underscore offset, which is the time offset knob that is in there, and then set the value to frame offset before. That is where we just did the math right here. And then we're doing the exact same thing for the time offset after node. So just go in and take the value that we just did in the math right here and assign it here, set that value. Now, after that, just a little bit of quick change that happens here in the dissolve, because for the dissolve, we want to actually put in keyframes. So every time the user clicks execute, we want to set up some keyframes. So before we actually set keyframes, what if the user constantly wants to change this value? What if their blending duration of 100 wasn't good enough and they want to set it to 200? And if they click execute, you want to first remove any keyframes that were already set onto the dissolve. So for that, we're just doing a quick command called nuke.animation. And then we're naming the node that we are setting it on, which is dissolve1.which and we're setting it to clear. So that will just clear any animation and it will set that knob to be keyable. After that, we're just setting dissolve node dot which to be set dot set animated. This one is optional. If you remove it, it will still work because the dissolve dot which command that we set here with the nuke dot animation, it automatically clears all the animation and sets that knob to be keyable. So if we remove this, it will be the same, but we have added it just in case. So it is clear to understand. We're just setting the which slider on the dissolve node to be animatable. So we're setting it to turn on animation. After that, 
we're just setting it at different values so we're saying dissolve nodes which slider set value at and then we're defining first of all the actual value that we want to put and then after the comma we're defining what frame you would want to set this onto so the first value we want to obviously set it to the very first frame which was our frame in variable that we had set up here then for the next one we want to set the value of one because we want our dissolve to go from zero to one to the next keyframe if you remember we set this one to zero then we set it to one at the end of our duration then we continue at a value of one towards the end and at the very last frame we change it to two so essentially we're doing the exact same thing however in this keyframe you might remember that our value was actually negative and what i mean by that if if you go to the math right here frame offset before our duration is 100 but the frame out is actually 501 so 100 minus 501 will actually be 400 minus 401 which is negative and this actually helps push the entire clip towards the left side enabling us to do the actual looping but in our case since in this case we're actually setting keyframes we want it to go to frame 401 so we don't really care about the negative sign before and as a result of that in the frame description right here we're actually using the math function abs or absolute whenever you write abs or absolute and then in the brackets you put whatever value it ignores the negative sign and it makes it an absolute positive value so if we're doing abs bracket minus 401 it's actually going to change to 401 so that's what we're doing there and then at the very end we're setting the final set value at the frame out which is our final frame so with that said all we have to do is now hook into any other video that we want so for example in our case i have this little flyover video and i want this flyover to just keep animating and looping so that i can use that as an element so if I double click here and I see, first of all, I have to check the frame range. So this one goes from frame one to frame 529. So now I don't have to tweak or change any of this. I can just go into my no op and set the frame out to 529. And then I can decide how much duration we want for the blending. We're just gonna keep it 200 and then click execute. And the moment we click execute, you can see that the different keyframes have already been assigned and we don't really have to worry about anything else other than just previewing the final output. And it should start looping automatically. So this is the first keyframe. And if I go to the very end, you'll see that that's the similar keyframe towards the end. And we know that our overall shot has now looped. And as you can see that this video is now cross dissolving and seamlessly playing from the start to the end. So this is the quickest and easiest way to do a cross dissolve seamless loop inside of Nuke. There are much more advanced ways of doing this exact same thing using something like Kronos where you're actually morphing the video from one to the other depending on whatever is the end frame. You actually try to morph that into the first frame using tools like Kronos but obviously they're slightly higher in terms of the complexity of setup and also that they're slower to process so this one usually works for most elements that are very abstract like smoke or water or fire so if you ever wanted to package this entire thing into a group you could do that too just select all the nodes that you want it to be a part of so I'm just going to deselect all of these and then also delete the text node because we don't want that one and I'm just going to also delete, disconnect the viewer and then just select all of these and then go to edit, click on node and then click on group and then control G or collapse to group. And the moment you do that, it's going to ask you, please choose one of the following nodes to use as the group's output, meaning what is the final output node? In our case, that is the frame range two. So we're just going to select that and click OK. And our group is created just like that. So if you wanted to name this, you can name it loop simple. 
and then now you're seeing that we're missing our actual buttons and knobs so in order to bring them out we're just going to click on manage user knobs and instead of adding new ones we're just going to pick the ones that are existing on the inside of our group so we can just open up the no op and then open up the user section and select all of these and click ok and click done and our loop simple node is ready to go now you can see that there are two inputs to it so if you double click and click on this s icon at the top right you can see that's because there are two inputs one connecting to the frame range and one connecting to the no op we don't really care about the no op input so we're going to disconnect it and we're going to disconnect the frame range one delete input two and connect input one to the frame range and that should be it once we close and we come out you can see now there's only one input I'm just going to go in and quickly change the color to this so i know that it is a custom made knob that i just created and just like that we have our little gizmo ready to go anytime you find any kind of footage you just need to know what the input and output frame range is and then simply input that into our tool one 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 two and don't think that you have to use the existing frame range if this footage for example is a thousand frames long and i don't really need it to be a thousand frames long i only care about the first 200 frames you could just go in and put your frame out to 200 and then just set the blending duration to let's say something like 50. Now, obviously this will be a little bit too apparent because 50 frames is not enough time to cross dissolve between two things without the eye actually noticing it so i'm still gonna click execute and our setup is done you can see our frame range is automatically set to 200 here so i'm just gonna set it to 200 and click and you can see that our video starts dissolving from one to the next so with that said i hope you enjoyed this quick little tutorial about how to create seamless loops inside of nuke if you'd like to use the same node that i created for this tutorial feel free to jump into our discord server where we have a ton of amazing artists that share their work daily and I have a section in there called useful links where you can find all the tools and utilities that i create for free to use in any of your projects so I hope to see you guys there and if you'd like to know anything else about Nuke or if you have any Nuke specific tutorials that you'd like to see, feel free to leave a comment down below and a like and a share does also go a long way. So thank you for watching this video and I'll see you guys in the next one.